look, this is the reason he pissed me off, because he was talking shit about when I stuck up for Snoop Dogg as a fan, cuss at the TV, say what you want about the fight that's happening. That's your right as a fan. Obviously, Snoop ain't gonna do shit either. He was talking shit. But I guess he thought that it was Kobe Covington too. So that motherfucker deserves to get his ass whooped. Shit, he was just happy T. Woodley was winning. Snoop ain't sliding in people's DMs talking about mamas and sisters and see all petty as fuck, man. Oh my God, if I could just one day just catch somebody, just one person that was talking that shit. So I blocked the dude because he making me mad. And this motherfucker literally made another page called Mike Perry's Daddy. He took time to make another page, but I told him I'd give him a plane ticket. He just had to give me his information so I could send the info to him. Please, I beg you, please troll me in person. Just somebody have the balls to do it in person. I'll go to jail. Nah, I was just playing. I just like to listen to that energy inside of myself. I let people get me mad sometimes because that real anger is like, you know, it gets me more followers. Y'all fuck with that shit. It's, it's, it's real shit. Three minutes. It is one of those kind of fights. And I think because there's not a great deal of build up, there's a lot of mystery around what's going on, how each fighter's looking and and where their mind's at going into this one. I keep going back and forth on it. You know, when we first started talking about the fight, I expected Khabib to be able to get Connor to the floor and just maul him. But then that opinion's changed several times. You know, I, I watched the the first two rounds of the Aya Quinta fight and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, Khabib's dangerous. Then I watched the last two rounds and I thought, I think Connor's going to knock him out with the left hand. You know, you go back to the Michael Johnson fight. I felt the same thing then. You you saw him rock for a second. You think Connor's going to light him up with that left hand. And I just the, the thing that keeps going around in my head is that Khabib lacks footwork. He's excellent once he's got his hands on you. But until he gets his hands on you, his footwork is just moving forward. And Connor's smart enough to start walking people on. Now, the difference is that he's got to create the space to land that left hand. And we saw Edson Barbosa struggling, but Edson Barbosa's a kicker. So with Connor, you know, being a specialist with his left hand, I feel like he's going to be able to create that space for it. I do think he's going to have to survive a couple of rounds, though. Eddie, let me ask you, as a as a jiu-jitsu master, if you were to work with Conor McGregor for his fight versus Khabib, what would you what would you do? I mean, I mean, is he, could he master the rubber guard in fucking eight weeks? What would you, how would, how is he going to survive down there? I mean, listen, I, having, I, if he doesn't I, knock him out initially, of course, people are saying that, but yeah, tell me um, your thoughts on that. Um, you know, uh, if I, if I had, you know, three, four months to train him, um, I'd be, I would definitely add rubber guard to his game. Would it be enough at that point? I don't know. Uh, but I would add a lot of other stuff too. We would be working, you know, guard retention, guard recovery, side control escape, back escape, mount escape over and over every day, side control escape, guard recovery, guard retention. Yeah. Um, uh, you know what? I think the mistake people are making with Khabib, the biggest mistake is when they get taken down, um, they're trying to get back up. I, yeah. it, it, getting back up is not going to work against Khabib. He's, that, that's where he shines. He shines in riding people that are trying to get back up. I think, you know, if, when Tony fights Khabib, he's not going to be trying to drag himself up from the fence. He's going to square up and fight him off his back, yeah. not spend the whole goddamn round trying to get up and getting beat down. That shit ain't going to work against Khabib. He wants you to do that shit. So he hasn't had anybody with a high-level guard square up with him and fight him and go after mm. him for off his back. You know what I mean? Attack him off his back, not trying to drag themselves away and trying to climb up the fence and just drag themselves and turning and trying to stand up. That shit will never work. That's just going to lose you rounds. So, you know, I'm not saying that my strategy will work, but we already know that other strategy is, is not going to work. I got to ask, 
were you watching the, the fight last week? Jessica Andrade, oh, amazing yeah. performance. Yeah. I mean, it, do you it, do even you have to have to sit back and go? That was amazing. She she probably deserves a title. Yes shot. and no, but I, I'm I'm impressed and uh, I like Jessica Andrade. I know her for a long time. Like I said before, we we used to be under the same management. Uh, I'm still a friend with Thiago Kamura, who is her manager right now, but. She's very talented. She's very tough and, and very strong. She dropped for, from 135. Uh, that time she couldn't go to 125, but it's good. Uh, she's doing very good in, in the strawweight division, even after uh, dropping to this weight so many pounds. But um, I'm impressed. It was a good performance. Uh, she stole the show. Great uh, KO power. And, uh, but there is nobody who, who, who beat her. Uh, for the last few months, for the last few years, actually, our fight, I fought Jessica Andrash in May 2017. Uh, I know that we're learning, evolving with every day, every month, with every camp and every fight, but uh, only me, only only me beat, beat Jessica Andrash, and, and that's the point. They don't know how to fight. I really thought that uh, Carolina was going to do better, but uh, you cannot take punches with no guard, you know, uh, from Jessica Andreas. So it was a big mistake, but I believe that Carolina will be back very soon, and I hope that she, she stays strong. Of course, we can all recognize Nico Montano from uh, uh, from a lineup for whatever you want, but she was stripped of the belt at the weekend. Look, I, I think that the UFC, it seems like they pick and choose the, the punishments. I think there needs to be some sort of clear-cut criteria because there has been other times when fighters have um, had to pull out due to medical reasons and they haven't stripped them of their title. I kind of feel for Nico Montano here. I do. I understand why the UFC would do it because it's been a long time since she won the belt and she hasn't fought. But she had her tonsils out, she got sick, she had some kind of inflammation in her body or something, and then now she got sick uh, and couldn't continue the fight or couldn't even continue cutting weight to make it to the fight. <sighs> I don't think she should have been stripped, but I kind of understand why the UFC did it. I really do. I mean, ultimately, if you... All right, let's talk about this. The way in at the weekend, the reason it went wrong is Nico Montagna's fault. It's not like she was sick. When anybody's cutting weight and they have to cut the weight cut short because, oh, my body's going to break down. Uh, I'm going to die. It's because you fucked up. It's because you messed up the entire weight cut process. It's because you wasn't professional in training camp. You didn't make adjustments. I mean, as you're preparing for a fight camp, you look at your weight. You get out of bed every single day and you check your weight. That's the first thing you do. Me, when I'm in fight camp, I get out of bed, I go to the bathroom, I try and piss as hard as I can to be as light as possible, then I step on the scale. And you look at that weight. That's your true weight when you get out of bed every morning. Okay? And then you think, oh, shit, this is going on track. Or this is not on track. I need to make some changes. And halfway through the training camp, if you're looking at your weight and that weight weighing scale isn't saying what it should do, then you need to make some changes, whether it's more running, more treadmill, more whatever, stricter diet, fewer carbs. You make changes. And then if you get to 24 hours before and you're trying to cut weight and you've got too much weight to cut and you can't physically do it and doctors are saying you've got to stop or you're going to die, 
you fucked up in your preparations and I've got limited sympathy. Yeah, I feel sorry for you. Yeah, I'm sorry you got stripped. Yeah, I'm sorry that, you know, you didn't get your payday and I'm sure she needed that money. But the reality, if, if, if you want to take the, uh, the empathy out of it, the reality is that you fucked up along the way.